Here's the thing with Once and Future. That's a King Arthur reference. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Graphic Content. I'm your host, Ted Kendrick, and if uh, today looks a little different, it's because my desk is missing the monitor. So this is, uh, you could say it's an anti-monitor episode, even though it's got nothing to do with Crisis on Infinite Earths. I just, I don't have my, my desk set up a little differently today. Today we're talking about Once in Future. It's a new series from Boom Studios, written by Kieran Gillen, who is known for his image series Wicked and Divine, which just wrapped up, as well as his work for Marvel, doing Uncanny X-Men and Young Avengers, as well as books for their Star Wars line, Darth Vader, and its spinoff, Dr. Aphra. Dan Mora does the art on Once in Future. Dan Mora is known for doing Hexed and Claws, which is kind of a Game of Thrones version of Santa Claus by Grant Morrison. This book just got released in August of 2019. It's pretty new. The first issue is the only one I've read so far, but I really enjoyed it. Definitely from the title, you know you're getting into some Arthurian legends, some Great Britain type of mythology going on here. So it starts off with an archaeologist investigating a lake that has dried up because even in real life right now, Great Britain and um, England in general are going through some massive droughts. Uh, climate change is even predicting massive effects within the next 25, 35 years. That's at play here in the the series with the droughts happening, a lake has finally dried up enough for a team of archaeologists to do an expedition there. So while they're there at the lake, they end up finding this old sheath that is in pristine condition. It looks like it's from the 5th or 6th century, which is about the time of the Middle Ages and the King Arthurian legends. So this sheath, lo and behold, ends up being the sheath that King Arthur used to carry Excalibur in. Although we don't really get that reveal until later in the book. <clears throat> it's fairly expected from the beginning though because once archaeologist uh, makes this discovery, a group of people immediately show up and they're kind of wearing Knights of the Templar style outfits mixed with like sort of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. spy looking group. Definitely some sort of Black Ops uh, religious based organization that is looking to secure these artifacts. So they take the sheath. Then we jump to another character. His name is Duncan and he is a college professor who's going out on a date and it starts off and his date's going really badly. He's just spilled a glass of wine all over his date's white dress and he's super embarrassed about it. I can relate. I went on a date when I was in high school uh, with my girlfriend. We went to Waffle House and I spilled a glass of orange juice all over her and she jumped up screaming. There's a lot of things wrong with that sentence I just said so let's let's move on. Date doesn't go well and then he gets a phone call during the middle of all that and it's from a nursing home where his grandmother Bridget lives. Bridget's very independent herself. She actually checked herself into this nursing home just so that her grandson Duncan wouldn't worry about her but Bridget's escaped from the nursing home, even though Duncan was supposed to visit her the next day. So after he gets a call from the home, Bridget, his grandma, immediately calls Duncan. She tells him where she is at and Duncan goes to find her, leaves his date alone, but he does promise to do her dry cleaning. So at least he's noble in that regard. Duncan finds his grandma in the middle of some woods. She ended up paying Uber to drive her all the way out in the middle of nowhere. And as they go out in the woods, uh, grandma starts digging and she finds a chest. This is something that she herself put there decades before. They open the chest and it's full of an arsenal. It's like uh, assault rifles, and stakes and silver bullets and all sorts of guns and swords, which really freaks Duncan out because um, he didn't really peg his grandmother as that type of person. But grandma, here she is with all these weapons. She says that she used to hunt vampires. Used to because she ran out of vampires. This is something she's never talked about with Duncan before, but uh, must have been a big part of her life and what she did before growing old. So she was a prime vampire hunter on her earlier in her days and now she's retired but she has gone out to get all these weapons because she's heard about the excavation where they found the sheath on the news and she knows that is the sheath that belonged to King Arthur that used to hold Excalibur and she's gone to get her arsenal for reasons I'm sure to protect the sheath. She claims that the sheath can heal anything even though most people are more into what the sword can do. The sword obviously grants its wielder great power that's what King Arthur used to unite Camelot, create the Knights of the Round Table, and all that. And there's a prophecy that once Excalibur returns, and that Excalibur will return along with its great King Arthur during Britain's darkest days. And between the climate change drought and Brexit going on right now, I don't know if this book is going to uh, address Brexit directly since a lot of the issues there are in play uh, coming real soon the next couple months before 2019 is over. Brexit will be a lot more obvious <laughs> as in terms of the direction that's going to go. But um, it still leads you to 
to think that, okay, maybe we are in Britain Stark's days now, and the sword is coming back because they need to, to get them out of these dark days. But Grandma Bridget seems to think that when the sword returns along with King Arthur, it will usher in potential dark days. So I believe that she is trying to find the sword before the Black Ops knights can get their hands on it because she's trying to protect the world from what that could potentially bring. When she and Duncan leave the chest in the woods, they come across a beast called the Questing Beast. Now, Duncan, just a few minutes ago, didn't even know vampires were a real thing. He thought Excalibur and King Arthur was all just mythology as well, much less this Questing Beast, which is this giant lion-looking monster with like a serpent head. The Questing Beast ends up chasing Duncan around the forest just long enough for him to distract it so Grandma can kind of get prepared to fight it. But right as he leads the beast back to Grandma, the beast just suddenly vanishes. Just just as soon as he arrived, it is gone. Grandma expects that the beast will come back at the most annoying time sometime in the future, which is a foreshadowing if I've ever read it. I'm sure the questing beast will be back before the first series arc is probably over. We'll see that thing cause some, some problems later. Maybe even we could see them kind of convince the questing beast to be on their side. I don't know, that'd be kind of cool, but this book could go anywhere like that. Either way, what we learned by the end of it is that the sheath has the power to heal anybody, and the Black Ops Knights that have it now take it to a tomb where we are led to believe that it is King Arthur's dead body lying in this tomb and they bring the sheath there no doubt planning on using it to resurrect King Arthur and so we've got that group of people going off to find Arthur and usher in what could potentially be a new dark age for Britain while Duncan and his grandma Bridget go on their own quest I believe the two groups will collide as they actually discover the sword of Arthur although as grandma Bridget explains it is not actually Arthur's sword. Arthur did use the sword, but he received it from one of the ladies of the lake who owned the sword originally. Although the sheath is empowered, <laughs> the sheath did belong to Arthur, most likely empowered by Merlin. Grandma Bridget also kind of unveils a slight history lesson that yes, Arthur was responsible for bringing all the knights together and uniting Camelot, but then what history likes to leave out is that Arthur led a conquest against a European empire at the time and totally annihilated it. So it was a group of united European countries, very similar to how the European Union and Brexit is branching off of that. So it's another parallel sort of between British antagonism against a united Europe. It'd be really interesting to see where that goes and I really like the parallels between what's going on in that book and what's currently happening in the world with the United Kingdom. So definitely one to look out for. I have not read the famous Camelot 3000 series that was published by DC in the 1980s, but I'm told that this is a really unique sort of spiritual successor to that, which is a essentially just to say it's a comic book that's taking those Arthurian legends and mythology and playing with them in a modern context. So it should be really cool to see where it goes. Uh, Boom Studios is one of those independent comic publishers that are doing some really exciting interesting things right now and Kieran Gillum is one of comics top writers so this should be a really good one to keep up with and I'm sure the first story arc will be available in trade paperback uh, sooner than later. So because of my new setup you can actually see more of my comic wall than you normally can. So I have a contest for you and if you win you will receive my copy of the Once and Future number one. So here's the contest. If you can name all the books here on these bottom two rows, if you can go from the left to the right, if you can name all books that are here in the background, you get my copy of Once and Future number one. The covers are there. You might have to freeze frame this video and kind of zoom in a bit and figure out what is what, but if you can name them all, that book has your name on it. Thanks again for watching the whole episode. Um, hope you liked the video. Share it around if you did. You can catch me here doing graphic content every two weeks. I also do the 12th Level Intellects podcast with James Strecker and I'm the writer on the legacies of the, the <laughs> and I'm the writer on the legacies of the DCAU webcomic which you can read on legaciesdcau.com. So I invite you to check all that stuff out and uh, if you like this come back watch me again. I'll be here in two weeks from now. Um, that's that's about it. Bye. <laughs>